Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? This is Easy Things to Draw 101. Hopefully, you're doing great because I am. I'm doing, oh, I feel really energized. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, what was I talking about? Okay, so anyways, this video is about me fixing one of my drawings. Uh, this is a drawing I did two years ago and I want to go over it on camera and fix it with everyone. So I'm, you know, that's the subject of this. And a lot of, this one's gonna be mostly about repairing and adding detail, while some of them are completely about, completely changing the design. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, if you love learning drawing tips that'll help you out immediately, and if you like learning how to draw your own characters, if you like seeing different versions of, you know, classic characters that I draw, uh, if you just like, you know, hanging out, talking, that's cool too, we can do that, you know, on the comments, uh, please subscribe. Uh, press the subscribe button below and don't forget to check that bell icon because that'll actually give you notifications of when it comes I'm gonna put up like I said I already said it before three times a week that's my goal no more than that not gonna bug you just cool stuff okay guys what's up how's it going <clears throat> I'm taking this drawing and this drawing was done last um, last summer I believe it was done in it was actually done in May of two years ago which is a wild and I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna try to fix it up and make it more presentable that's my entire goal to this it would be making it presentable to a client so that's kind of the goal with this if you think of the one thesis the one goal would be making it more presentable to a client Really. So I have this old design, and the design's okay. It's kind of weird. It's kind of goofy. It's wonky. It reminds me of um, some old video game character. I think that's probably what I was thinking about when I was doing this. But um, you know, one thing I already did right off the bat was I ended up fixing, uh, I, you know, those little prongs on top of his head. I ended up putting matching prongs on the other side and kind of darkening those up. I did that almost immediately. Hopefully um, that came out. I'm kind of putting this on a, um, this is twice as fast as normal, so I can just talk through it and you don't have to wait all day. But just kind of be aware of that. This is not, you know, real time. Putting in some rivets into his neck. So the majority of this will be adding detail. I mean, that's, that's the big part of it and I'm adding detail everywhere and I, this doesn't seem like a detail oriented design but I wanted to make it that I like detail on things I'm not a big animation guy I should be but I'm more into like detail on form like the cross hatch that kind of thing so we get into the mouth I'm trying to make that more cylindrical if I can Make it look like it's really like like it's a hole, you know, like he's actually like in the mouth. Go down the neck again. Pulling out some things that I know, some things that I'm pulling from human anatomy. Go into the eye. I wanted his eyelids to kind of close and shut um, a little bit differently. I wanted like instead of the right to left like a human eye, I wanted. Uh, kind of up to down, like his tear ducts are up to up, up and down, up and top and bottom. Throwing a little bit of half tone on his forehead to kind of give it some form. Throwing in some more value over here along the those little horns <coughs> or spikes. In terms of what he is, I, I didn't really have any thought in my head as to what it was going to be. I just thought I wanted a cool anteater maybe, anteater type of uh, creature, or kind of mo more of a character really, he's not really so much of a creature, and he's got like a, like again, a cartoony style feel, like he would be in a goofy video game, like Earthworm Jim, or, you know what, like uh, Ratchet and Clank, just like something goofier, um, like design wise, even though I want to add detail on him. I'm gonna have to on his back. I'm 
pushing a little bit more of that kind of value in the bottom. I'm trying to pull a little bit of a core shadow out, and hopefully you know what a core shadow is. Core shadow is that kind of bar of dark you see in a lot of different designs, where um, there's reflected light coming from the bottom, like reflected, bouncing off whatever his chest or whatever that may be, and, and then the direct light above, so it causes this thin kind of band of shadow along the bottom of uh, certain objects. It makes it look really nice. Going in here along the end, this is one of the weirder parts of the design that I regret and I can't really change, is this little spike at the end makes almost zero sense to me. I don't see how this would function, but... Going into kind of the eyes, and I'm pulling out the darks now. I'm trying to, because normally when I fix up uh, a drawing, I'm like pushing darks and then pulling out half shadows. I'm creating more focus the more I work. Creating more focus. Where is it going to be? Or just kind of focusing the image like an overall thing. Like you're maybe you're seeing it in your mind, and it's kind of blurry in your mind. You can't quite pull it out. And then this is what that's for. You're kind of focusing more and more and more by putting more detail. There is a way to overwork a drawing, so you have to be careful. You put just too much junk everywhere and it kind of becomes broken. But I'm more of a, like a sketch artist. I, I drop fairly quickish, I think. Um, so I don't, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of overworking on my stuff, I don't think. If you guys want, check out my Patreon. I'm going to be promoting my art there. Uh, I was doing it to kind of, uh, if anybody wanted uh, help, you know, with drawing and, you know, wanted me to fix their drawings, but um, I think I'm going to change it to just uh, my art in general. I'm really relaxed right now. I came back from Napa Valley, just chilling. I was on vacation there. Sorry for the lack of videos, I'm going to try to put more. I'm going to try to put three a week, that's going to be my goal. If you guys have any, you know, requests, like I know you always do, just shoot them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Throwing in more value, more value, more value. It starts to become therapeutic at this point, um, with value. I just started throwing lines in the direction that I already see it. I've already built something, and so I'm just kind of like pushing what I already know on top of that. I'm also working on a How to Draw Monsters book. I'm going to try to push that very soon. I want to go over like every aspect of monster design. Going over here, throwing again, more finesse. And you've heard me say that word a lot, just kind of finessing stuff. I'm pulling more halftone, more halftone. And pulling that major dark under his, uh, under his neck there. That's kind of an easy thing to do. I would rec recommend anybody do that. It's really easy to just pull that dark under the neck. Putting more value on that spike in the back to kind of make it go, kind of feel, kind of push it back. Normally the way to push, I mean, you're obviously dealing in value, but sometimes to make something push, you know, seem further in the background, you have to kind of make it darker, but it's sometimes, like, again, pulling it forward, you have to do that. It depends how you use that. I might actually make a video on that subject. 
because some things that you make darker will come forward immediately and some things will, go, will push back. And that it has to do with how where you're putting it. And that's pretty much it. I fixed this thing up. Uh, you can see the comparison. Uh, I essentially kind of like put those spikes in the back and I also put a lot more value and detail within like the kind of skin texture. So that's pretty much all I did on this one. Uh, I'll, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time.